full name is Highland Eugene Church, Jr. Reginald III. No, I'm just kidding. It's Highland Eugene Church, Jr. That's my actual birth given name. I am from the somewhat small town of St. Joseph, Missouri, back in the Midwest. Well, growing up, it was actually really cool. I mean, I knew a lot of other, you know, musicians. Um, actually, was kind of hanging out with some guys older than me um, that were playing music already. And so at that time, I got a really cool opportunity to play with these guys. And when I was in high school, kind of travel around and, and play places. But I would say, like, um, probably the bigger music scene would be in Kansas City because St. Joe's just outside of Kansas City. So Kansas City has a pretty big, you know, blues, blues scene. It's known for that. Oh, well, Hollywood. So when I was living in, when I left St. Joe and moved to Kansas City, I was playing in a band called Harlow. And me and my buddy, uh, Mickey Kravitz, came out to L.A. to give it a visit. And uh, we just really dug it and thought it was the place to be, you know, at that time with the music scene. So the band caravanned out and we moved out to L.A. with, you know, big dreams like all the other bands that did that. I think it was 1932. No, I don't. It was a while ago, man. It was a while ago. The scene was really happening, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a daze. That's all I remember. A Vox teardrop. Wish I still had it. Man, actually, I. Before I started playing bass, I had an acoustic guitar. Most of the time it had two strings on it. So and that was like second grade. Um, and then my brother was a drummer. So, you know, I'd watch him play and got inspired, played a little bit of drums as well. Um, mostly a Fender guy. Um, I do play a custom uh, PJ that my old guitar player, Gio, uh, from Life After Death made for me. and. That one still rocks, so I keep playing that, and then various others, but mostly a Fender guy. We met at uh, the Palace in Hollywood, playing um, a tribute concert for Phil Lynott from Thin Lizzy, and he was in the band DC4, and I was in uh, my band Life After Death. I think I knew that I wanted to be a drummer, when I was probably about four years old. Um, my mom used to play uh, Boss Gags and uh, Jeff Percaro was the drummer. And the song Lido Shuffle, whenever it came on, I was just totally zeroed into that tune. That triplety groove, you know, it was just so smooth and silky. And I loved that song and would just kind of zone out whenever that song came on my mom's stereo and her with like 64 Volkswagen Bug with no seat belts. Um, when I was 16, uh, I took some uh, a little bit of cash that I had earned uh, working during the summertime, and I bought a drum set from the father of one of my buddies in high school, my buddy Paul Tarantino, shout out to Paul. Um, I bought his dad's uh, 1968 Red Sparkle Ludwig drum kit with old zildjian cymbals and the old straight stands and it had the original heads on it and everything and I just played the shit out of that drum set for a couple years in a row. Wow, my three top drumming influences. I think overall from beginning to end I would have to say Jeff Percaro, John Bonham and Alex Van Halen. Um, those guys, I keep coming back to their drumming, you know, I'm now in my 50s and I'm still picking up stuff from each one of those guys. Um, you know, recently uh, this cover band that I've been playing in has been working on some Van Halen stuff and I did a real deep dive in Hot for Teacher and there's a lot of really interesting stuff in that groove, you know, that's, that's really kind of actually helped me uh, and my musical knowledge 
a couple years ago, I was playing, um, one of the bands I was playing in was this cover band, Gravel, which Ray also plays in. And Ray had told me about the Highland Church Band and, you know, the Highlands music. And I guess they had a festival that they needed a drummer for. And so I agreed to listen to the music and, um, and play the show. And the thing that really grabbed me about Highlands Band from the get-go, from the music from the get-go, was it just felt effortless you know we all have the same classic rock influences and it was so easy to sit down and compose parts you know and the other thing that i really enjoyed about starting this you know particular leg of the highland church band with these guys was highland didn't necessarily have any kind of like preconceived pre-thought out grooves or you know tempos or whatever it was kind of like here's the basic format for the song let's just see where it goes originally my top two guys geezer butler and jack bruce for sure you know these days i'm open to all kinds of styles so there's it's endless how many guys i'm into as far as they're playing but those two guys are the initial uh, influences on my my plan. So I was auditioning for Warrior, um, and uh, I had sent a promo pack in, and of course all my lettering was old English style, and then um, I had the the stash going, and uh, Roy Z saw that picture and read my my influences and stuff. And he goes, "Let's give this geezer dude a, a call," and uh, from that day he's. He, he, he nicknamed me Geezer. <laughs> I knew this really great guitar player. His name was Greg Leon. And uh, Greg was just a great player. He still is. You know, he played with like Dokken and Quiet Riot, a lot of the 80s bands. And um, a buddy of mine was playing bass in the band. And so I just, you know, went up there one day and jam with those guys and it just clicked. So that was my first band outside of Harlow in Los Angeles. My first guitar, so I started playing guitar when I was 12 and my first guitar was an acoustic and I don't remember what kind of acoustic it was. It was just a small acoustic and uh, I played that for probably about a year took lessons and uh, it was actually really cool starting out on acoustic I think just because um, you know just learning learning on that kind of guitar so when I went to electric guitar about a year later uh, I just thought wow this is like way easier to play you know than that acoustic was and then my first electric was probably like it was some kind of Les Paul knockoff maybe like a Kent or something like that but yeah, that's where it started. So my baby is like this, uh, it's a Gibson Les Paul gold top and it's a, a 1980 Heritage Series. So I just love that guitar. I actually don't take it out that much. It's like super heavy, but it has, you know, just a really special place in my heart. So I don't want anything to happen to it. Um, but that's a killer guitar. But what I've been playing live lately is I have a Les Paul Jr. that just, it's got a P90 in it and it just screams, it's super raw and I just really love that guitar. And then I've got a Gibson uh, non-reverse Firebird, like Pelham Blue, that I've been playing that out lately. Um, but I've got like another Les Paul, it's like a Les Paul Classic, a lot of stuff in, in my room at home. I'm really a Marshall guy, man. Like, I, I, uh, I just love classic tone. Um, my favorite head that I have is, it's like a 68 Marshall Plexi 100 watt. Uh, I don't take that out too often either though, but for live, I've been using a JCM 800 uh, 50 watt Marshall. I think it's like a 1982 or something like that. So I've got that. I've got another like 72 Marshall 50 watt head. Um, but I have some fenders too. I have a couple of old fender basement heads. I've got like a fender hot rod deluxe like that. 
actually sounds cool if you just want to take a combo to a gig sometimes. And um, yeah, just like the old vintage stuff pretty much, but I love Marshalls. I've played in a lot of bands over the years and primarily in those bands I was uh, a guitar player, you know, which is really cool and a lot of fun just playing a rock guitar in a, a band, not having to worry about singing or anything like that. But in all those bands, you know, something would happen, the band would eventually break up and, um, and kind of the more people you deal with, there's you know, there's more that has to go into decision making and, and stuff like that. So I think after the last band I played in, you know, man, I just want to start my own band and, um, you know, and just, uh, I don't know, just have a little bit more of, um, you know, control over things and, and just, just really have fun, you know, just have fun with it. And, uh, so that's, I guess, kind of how it started, is just wanting to make it simpler and just have it be fun. And, and I think we've really done that with this band for sure. I dig it, you know, I think the whole band digs it. It's just a straight out, you know, rock song. I think it's hooky. Uh, it's just, it's just, rock you know it's kind of cool i think what's really kind of cool that what i love about like that tune too is the way we recorded it and it started out with me basically demoing the song and logic at home and and i laid the guitars down and all that so we started with that and then um our drummer dustin has a logic studio also so then took that sent it to him and then uh he recorded his his drums to it and then we got Ray to come in lay down the bass and then we listened to all that and then we went you know took some guitar live guitar over to Dustin's studio threw the Marshall down added more of that kind of stuff to have that really raw you know live guitar sound and after that then we recorded the vocals I did it basically in my bedroom at home through Logic and uh and then Dustin mixed it. So what I'm really digging about all of that is that everything is like totally in-house, you know. It's a very, uh, we're doing it ourselves. And, and I love that we're doing that because we don't really have to de depend, you know, on somebody else. And so I, I just think that's really cool. You know, I love what we're doing that. The, the music really reflects, I think, our, you know, the, what, what music and artists inspired us, yes. the commonality between all of our influences, Definitely. how well we all get along. Yes. You know, I think that's, that all, yeah. Where's my fucking check? You know. <laughs> we so playing? now what? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, the fucking red lights oh, on. Wow. Oh, wow. Hey, oh, we're so, recording. So, yeah. yeah. Hey, so. These guys are pretty cool. They're playing a band with me. You got to do it because you love it. And that's one thing I, I feel with this band. We right. love creating the songs. We love playing them live. The whole process. I love you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come to a live show. Come check us yeah. out. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that's really where it happens. And if you dig the recordings, what you're hearing, come out to a live show, because uh, we love playing live, and that's where you know, that's where it really happens. And uh, I think you'll you, you'll feel the energy. We're the power of ten bands and three men. <laughs> the power of power of <laughs> ten bands and three men. Yes. <laughs> And three men. Like and a, three men. Three we're, men like a, we're like a three-piece Power shit. Ranger. I think with tacos are. That's another area that we all like, oh, yeah. really tacos kind of synced up on. You know, was, yes. If if you don't like tacos, you have no business coming to see us live or here. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah.